So we completed shooting four targets here with um, using our, our wads with the SPG lube and here's our average speeds that we got 620, 639, 644 and 641 with some fairly low um, low deviations. Um, something interesting to note here I'm not getting one single speed um, above 700. These are all in the 600s. If we switch over to when we were using the lube on the end of the chambers um, again the same load, same bullet, everything else, same gun. Here we're getting speed 609. We're compared to the 620 for the first um, uh, first cylinder, for six shots. Then we jump to 742, 766, and 773. Um, we actually had a little better groups with um, these were these were good grouping here with these, but these are a little better even with with our deviations are running 15, 34, 19, and, and 14 compared to smaller ones over here. So begs the question is why are we getting 700s like an average here seven in the 760s and here almost um, what 80 feet per second less on the ones using the SPG lube or the lube wad. So here we have an idea um, we want to check out to see what's what's possibly going on here and we're going to um, explain what we're going to do here. You know, I'm thinking one of the possible reasons that we aren't getting the higher speeds well, a couple of reasons maybe even one of them I'm thinking maybe is because when we shove that after pouring the powder in we place that wad on there and it lubricates the first quarter of an inch or so of that um, chamber making it a lot easier to um, you know, shove the ball down almost mimicking the, the first cylinder where we don't have any following at all on the on the sides and possibly with that lack of following on there um, we're getting um, uh, a velocity uh, difference where when we have falling on there um, the ball pumps out harder possibly the powder burns better in here something like that to do with that and it may give us the extra extra speed that we're seeing so our plan here is to take and pour the powder down the chambers and then place a, a, a paper disc on top of the powder and then I'm going to do is shove the wad down um, on top of that to um, um, give us that lubrication here on that we're getting. Okay, then I'm going to do is pull the pull the wad out and um, and use a ball right on top of the powder. I'll also pull the paper disc out and I'll put the ball right on top of the on top of the um, uh, powder. And I guess what that's going to do is kind of tell me whether or not um, it's that lubrication inside the chamber wall here, or does it have something to do with something to do with the, the back side of this wad and the way the powder burns up against the, the lube that's in it? So anyway, that's what we're going to do, and we're going to uh, see if we get any any change in the um, in our speeds. It turns out after putting that paper down there, I'm having a hard time um, removing that, so I'm going to. End up just, just putting the wads down on top of that and then removing the wads and leaving that paper disc down there in all, in all six uh, chambers. Okay, here's what the inside of the chambers look like with our paper, paper wad stuffed on them. And this is what it looks like once we've uh, uh, stuffed the wads on top of those paper. Now we're going to work those out with our dental pick and, and uh, we'll see what goes next. Okay, we got our dental dental pick in there and picked out those um, those six wads. They show some some signs of falling on the on the outside of the edge, and they were back to just our discs in there. So that one is a little side a little bit. So next plan is to put the put the ball on top of those as we would have normally when we just had the wads in there. So we're going to load the ball on top of those uh, paper discs. So there we've got our our ball seated on top of the disc. I did take the precaution of loading the sprue up on those just because I won't have any other lubrication or anything in these um, just to make kind of as an added precaution so I might not get a flash going by the side in case there was a defect on that sprue cutoff. So okay we're gonna get this loaded up in the gun and, and shoot these six and see if we can get any speeds in the 700s or if they'll stay back in the sixes. Five 
44. That almost felt like a, like a hang fire. 618. Six thirty one. And six forty four. Well, here's the results from that last string that we shot, and we had an average speed of 629, which compares pretty well with the 641, 644, uh, 620 here, 639 that we had uh, on the first on the first um, four. And what we were trying to do is answer the answer the question is why when we're using wads we don't get the uh, speeds up into the 700s like we do when we're using the lube or actually using using nothing at all. And I can only think of two reasons why those speeds would be less. One of them would be that the wad here is up against the powder and it would be possible that this uh, lube that's on the wad somehow would mix in with the powder or when the burn went off we weren't getting a, a, a full you know a correct a correct burn for the for the black powder because the lubrication on the back side of that wad is affecting the burn somehow. Well, that was one idea. The other I've had, uh, we borrow an idea from uh, from cartridge shooting where if we sometimes need a factory crimp in order to get the charge to burn correctly. If there isn't enough tension on that projectile, um, some powders don't don't like that too well and, and you're not going to get the uniformity that, that you need. So maybe we should think about uh, following the build up inside of the chambers here, kind of like the crimp that we put on a, on a uh, smokeless cartridge in order to get the uh, powder to burn, burn uniformly. And if we think of what we would have if we ended up with a ball that we we're trying to shoot a ball that was kind of undersized and it actually had little or no friction to that at all compared to one that we've had to really ram down because there's a lot of following that's built up in this, along this, this chamber. We can maybe see where our, our speeds, in this case, don't get up to the 700 range, you know, because of that. And what happens when we put the, the uh, wad down in here, um, after putting our powder in, of course, we put the wad down in there, you know, the sides of this are going to impart some, uh, some lube along the side of this and push some of that falling down with it. So we actually have a, a case then where, where we don't have that kind of a crimp action that, that we might need in order to get that powder to burn correctly so it gets up up to a, a higher speed. And I think maybe the system that we used here kind of illustrated that because we put our powder down, put these uh, paper paper wads around on each of those uh, powders, and then we, we rammed down the, or we pushed down, I should say, pushed down the, the wads on each one, and then we pulled those wads back out. So we um, ended up lubricating those those sections and we did not have the wad in there when it fired so we know that there was no reason for the speeds to be down because of there was um, some of that lube getting into the powder and um, you know, like I say guess what we found we had you know slower speeds to me which kind of shows that it's that lubrication on the inside of that first half inch that um, uh, doesn't give that ball much friction and kind of acts like putting no crimp um, on some of our, um, our, our smokeless ca cases.